Hello, my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here. Today, once again, we have a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to upcycle a men's button-up shirt into something beautiful that will fit you. Now, you might have noticed that in each one of these full upcycling videos, we focus on one particular area. So in the first one, we completely reworked the armhole and drafted a new set in sleeve that would fit you. In the second video, we learned how to add darts. In the third video, we completely reimagined the garment and made something completely different. And we talked about how to maximize that very little amount of fabric that you have so that way you can make something else and something new from the shirt that is no longer worn. Today I would like to focus on a couple of things. First of all, I've noticed that in comments a lot of you don't like the fact that I leave the button plackets as they are, because in women's wear usually is the other way around. So today I want to offer you a solution how to tackle this area. With that, I'm also going to rework the neckline. Of course, tackle the sleeve and the side seams because as you can see, the shirt is quite large on me. This is my husband's shirt. Needless to say, he no longer wears it, so he gave it to me so that way I can upcycle it. And I also have a couple of stains here and there. So all in all, this is a good start and we'll see where it takes us. Now let me show you a quick before and after so that way you can see the direction that we're going. And when it comes to getting started, I know that there are three things that for sure will need to go. The first one is the sleeve. I need to unpick it from the armhole. The second one is the side seam. And the third one is the bust pocket. So I'm going to start with those. When it comes to materials, it says that this one is 100% cotton. It is non-iron travel collection. And fabric here is indeed very soft so it isn't as crisp and as stiff as your usual cotton poplin dress shirts that crease very easily so that means we can opt for a nicer more fun design that might involve a little bit of gathering a little bit of something else that is going to look really nice because the fabric allows it Now, if you decide to remove the bust pocket like I'm doing here, be prepared that the stitch marks don't always disappear, even after the wash, even after fluffing the fibers. So you have to be prepared to problem solve this. Now before we move any further, of course, we have to figure out the button placket. And here I see three solutions and you can pick which one you think would be the best for you. The first one is probably the easiest and the simplest, however, not my favorite, but it is an option. And basically you're going to reverse the placement of the buttons and the buttonholes. You're going to sew the existing buttonholes shut and you're going to remove the buttons from where they are right now. You're going to place those buttons on the old buttonholes and then on the button placket that is now going to be empty, you're going to make new buttonholes. That's basically it. The second option will involve a few more steps and only works if you are going to get rid of the neckline and if you have a shirt that definitely allows for more fabric to work with. First, start by unpicking or cutting off the neckline. Then, neatly unpick the shoulder seams. Once done, we're going to do a little switcheroo, so to say. You're going to flip the front upside down and then switch sides. And needless to say, you will need to copy or draft a new neckline and armhole and then sew in the front pattern pieces back into the shoulder seams. This way, you don't have to do anything extra about the button plackets, you're just switching them in places. Now the third option of course would be to completely cut off the existing button plackets and make them from scratch, which is something that I might be doing in this particular situation. When it comes to this next step, you don't have to do it at all because you might have a different shirt. Here I have pleats on each side of the armhole. You might have that one right at the center back or none at all. But over here, when I'm going to be adjusting the armhole, I'm going to be cutting right through them. It's going to be quite awkward. So I just want to get rid of them. Also right here, I have a little 
hole. I'm not sure if you can see it. And I am not quite certain that I can repair it uh, in a very invisible fashion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpick this part and take it and flip it upside down and sew it back in. So that way I can take care of this little hole. It's now going to be on the bottom and I will be cutting it off when I'm going to hem my garment. And I'm also going to get rid of these little pleats. Now I'm going to take it and flip it upside down like this. To make sure that I can sew in the bottom part into the yoke, I'm going to take a straight line and then reattach it. But if you have noticed, the original line, the one that we flipped upside down, wasn't actually straight, but it was curved. So let's take a look. You see a curve over here and a curve over here. And that is because these parts hide a little dart that helps in order to shape the armhole better to go over your shoulder blades. In my case, I don't necessarily need it because we're going to be uh, cutting off a good part of the armhole, but sometimes you might need it, especially if you're working on a form-fitting garment. All right, so the back pattern piece is reassembled as you can see. So now I can move on to figuring out the front. The challenge here is that I have to get rid of that stain and the stitching around the bust pocket. My first option is to flip the front pattern pieces upside down, as I mentioned before when we talked about the button placket. But due to the stain, I actually can't use the entire length of the front, so I'll have to figure something out. The idea that comes to mind is to make a front yoke to fill in the missing fabric at the top. That, unfortunately, does mean that I can't reuse the existing button plackets, so I'm going to unpick them and cut them off. Please note that I have unpicked the button placket and I'm cutting 3 8 of an inch past the original stitching line in order to save that seam allowance because we will need it in the future. Next, I'm going to make a straight line right above that stain. That is going to be my cutting line, but to be sure, I am first folding it under and then I will try it on my body to see if the amount of usable fabric is long enough for the bottom part of the new shirt. It seems that it's just barely enough, but I don't really have another choice, so let's roll with that. Now I need to find extra fabric within the shirt to make the front yoke. And the plan is to make sleeves on a shorter side anyway, so I'm going to use that to my advantage and I'm going to cut some of the sleeves so that way I can use that fabric for the yoke. Now it does look like I have a pretty good chunk of fabric here that I can work with, but for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but I was hesitating, and then a completely different solution came to mind. So I was thinking, what if I cut off the original part that has the neckline and the armhole and use that as top of the yoke? So here you see me cut it off and then use it as a new yoke. I'm not entirely sure why I haven't thought about this beforehand, but here we are. Regardless of this, I don't think I've ruined any of my plans because I had to cut the sleeves anyway. So fingers crossed, hopefully that's gonna be all right. And right now, I think I'm just going to pin everything together, the top part and the bottom part, and I will also pin it into the shoulder seam and I will try it on to see how I like it. So, so far I have a front yoke. I might want to bring it up a little bit higher, but I don't think I have enough length to do it. However, over here, since I'm actually putting this over already existing shirt, you can see that the length is just about the same. And this is the shirt that I wear tucked in or untucked. So if you have a shirt which length you like already in your wardrobe, you can put it on and then put your upcycle in the progress on top of it so that way you can compare. But be mindful that the fit then is going to look a little bit different. Afterwards, definitely try your upcycle in progress on the body itself without any t-shirts or shirts or sweaters underneath. 
I also want to double check if there's enough fabric right here on the sides so that way I can create a comfortable side seam with enough room in the garment itself so that way I can breathe, live, do all sorts of things in it and it does seem like there's plenty and there's also plenty of fabric here in the armhole so that way I can cut a new one. So I just have to decide if I like these proportions or if I want to bring the yoke a little bit higher, that of course brings the hem a little bit higher. I have to think about that. And then we'll be on our way to creating a new front for our shirt. All right, here's the course of action. First, we're actually going to cut away the seam allowance. Interestingly, the seam allowance here in this shirt are all fused. They're actually glued with interfacing. So the only way to do it is to cut them apart. And then I decided that I do want my yoke to end a little bit higher up. So I'm going to unpin here and with my marking tool, I'm going to place a new line for the yoke. Then I have to undo this and also make a straight line across. Now I'm going to cut, but not on the line itself, but I'm going to leave for myself about 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. On the bottom here, I also need to mark a straight line. I might curve it in later for the hem, but for right now, it's just going to be straight and it's going to be right above the stain that I can get out. Now I'm going to copy these pattern pieces on the other side so that way they match. to add just a little bit of feminine touch to the shirt because this particular stripe and color doesn't necessarily scream to me women's shirt. I want to add just the tiniest bit of gathers right over here. I can't really afford too many gathers but I want to incorporate that somehow as I mentioned to add more of that feminine look to this upcycle. To do this I'm going to take the bottom part of the front of the shirt, select the longest straight stitch and sew within the seam allowance. After that, pull on one of the threads to create the gathers. And just as a reminder, you don't have to do everything that I'm doing. That's the beauty of the upcycles. It's definitely totally up to you. So if you don't want to replace the button placket, don't. If you don't have stains that you need to work around, then of course you will skip some of the steps. In general, I just want to drive the idea home that you have the power to do whatever you would like and to reimagine these garments to give them a new life. So definitely pick and choose which steps are good for you and then continue with your plan. Next, I'm going to place these right sides together, aligning, making sure that everything is nice and neat, pinning and then sewing it with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance with a straight stitch starting and ending with a back stitch. This is what it looks like when done. From here we will need to finish the raw edges of the fabric. You can do that on your sewing machine by using a closely spaced zigzag stitch or an overcast stitch or you can do that on your serger. Now let me give this a really good press with the seam allowance facing up because our next step is to top stitch it. Once again, I'm going to do that with a straight stitch and remember that in cases like these, slow and steady definitely wins the race. Now after both sides are done, the next step is to figure out the button placket and the easiest way to go about it is to copy the one that we just cut off. As you can see, they're not the same and I personally don't like the white one so we will go with the one on the left. Now the problem here is that I need to find fabric for it and for that let's measure how much in length do I actually need for the button placket and perhaps I can cut off the bottom of the back pattern piece and use it for it. To figure out the button placket I'm going to grab the one that I'm going to copy. First we need to determine the length. That is going to be your center front opening from the very top of the neckline to the bottom hem. That's how long this line is going to be. Then we're going to measure the width. In this case it's one inch. So I'm going to place one inch here and then do another straight line. Now there are two sides to the button placket so we need to do one inch again. This is going to be the button placket itself but we also need to add seam allowances because I did leave 3 8 of an inch seam allowance at the center front. That's exactly what we're going to add on the left and on the right. So now we have 
seam allowance, button placket, button placket, seam allowance. And that's exactly how I'm going to cut it out. Now, in this particular case, I'm not necessarily using the paper pattern. I'm just marking it straight on the fabric, but you can do either way, whatever is best for you. Once the button plackets are cut, let's give them a good press and then interface them. The easiest way to do it for me is to press the button placket in half because my interfacing is one inch wide. Then I apply a strip of interfacing on each side of the crease. That also makes it really easy to press the seam allowance towards the inside of the button placket. All right, the button placket is all pressed, so now let's attach it to the front pattern piece. Here, place it right sides together with the front and start pinning it right into the crease of the seam allowance of the button placket and matching it with the original stitching line on the front pattern piece, which should match because they're both 3 8 of an inch away from the edge. After that, sew it with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance straight stitch with the back stitch at the end and at the beginning. All right, after you are done stitching down the placket, what we're going to do is place it wrong side up, so with the inside of the garment, and then we're going to fold the seam allowance towards the button placket, and then fold the button placket over, tucking in the other seam allowance. So now, from the wrong side, everything is going to be nice and tucked in and the last thing that we will need to do is to top stitch that from the right side of the garment however i'm not going to do it just yet because i wanted to show you something i have this beautiful blue trim i had it for the longest time i used it in some of my other projects and i'm thinking it would look just absolutely gorgeous if i place it right here like that so, in order to do that, I can't top stitch the button placket just yet. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is going to be connecting the front pattern pieces to the back pattern piece and then forming the armhole. To do that, I'm going to take the back pattern piece and the front pattern pieces and place them wrong sides together. Then I'll open up the back yoke, which in this case is made of two layers. So I'm going to sandwich the shoulder of the front pattern piece between the two layers of the yoke. I will align them and then top stitch them. Because I'm going to be using that blue trim, I decided to do all top stitching from here now with blue thread. Once the top stitching is done, let's go ahead and try it on one more time. Here's my shoulder seam, looking good, sits nice on my body. You can see that the button placket will go like this, obviously it needs to be finished. Now, let's go ahead and bring the side seams together. We want to determine where they will start. So right over here and where they will end and Let's pin these together on both sides to see how it feels. Side seams 
definitely are going to be okay so that's great and at this point if you'd like you can even leave it as this when it comes to the sleeves this would be a drop shoulder but I do want more of like a regular sleeve regular sleeve would sit right here on the edge of the shoulder or a little bit higher as well depending on the design so I actually might go a little bit higher because I do want my sleeve to be gathered and sometimes gathered sleeves sit a little bit better when they sort of roll off your shoulder and then I'll continue following the curve of my arm like so over here underneath your armpit usually the sleeve sits about one inch below the armpit but since this is going to be a relaxed sleeve I'm gonna take maybe two inches so make sure that you make that marking like so and we're ready to take it off let's get that armhole done so first here are the markings I hope that you can see them in white and next I'm going to unpin the side seam so it's easier for me to work. Since the sleeve is going to be a relaxed gathered sleeve, we don't have to draft armhole extremely precise, which gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of eyeballing it and not really worrying about it too much. So I'm going to take a straight line from the mark that we made on the side seam like this. And I'm going to take a straight perpendicular line down from the mark that we made on the shoulder seam. Now I need to create a really nice curved line. For that, I'm going to divide this line in half. For me, this line is eight inches long, so half is going to be four. We can take about half an inch, sometimes more, sometimes less, but let's say half an inch to the side. And that is going to help us to curve it in. So from here, I'm going to curve it in. There we go. It is also very possible that I might need to take some of the side seam in after we cut out the sleeve. So right now, we can go ahead and cut the front armhole only. When you cut, you're not going to be following the actual line. You will need to cut 3 8 of an inch, quarter of an inch, or half an inch away from it, depending on what width is your seam allowance. If you're just a little bit scared to cut all of that chunk out, which I totally get, I totally understand, you can start by cutting out a little bit at the time until you arrive at the point where you're happy with your armhole. Just remember, you have to account for the seam allowances that will be necessary in order to put in the sleeve. You can see that I've cut a generous half an inch away from it, so that way if needed, I have a margin of error after trying this on. Now here you can see how the new front armhole sits on my body and I can even fold in the seam allowances to get a better look. As of right now I can also pinch in the side seam and determine how and where to make that adjustment. This is the new marking that I made for the side seam so I'm going to fold it in half, mark it like so and right now as the armhole is placed, it's actually perfect because it will allow me to mark the back armhole without a problem. The only difference is that here, I don't want to curve it in as much. I actually want to go, not necessarily straight, but definitely straighter than the front armhole. As you know, there's always more than one option. And another solution for this would be to take a shirt that you already have in your wardrobe and then copy the curve of the armhole from there. And if you need more of a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that, I have a video where we copied the pattern off of your favorite t-shirt and we go over the curve of the armhole. So definitely take a look. As always, I will leave all necessary links for you guys in the description of this video. To double check if your armhole looks great, go ahead and open this up. This part needs to be smooth. And then when you place side seam to side seam, it should make a really nice smooth transition as well. Right now we also need to adjust the side seam. I'm not gonna take it all the way to my mark, but I'm gonna take about an inch away from it. And I'm going to take a straight line to the hem like so. Perhaps I'll take one inch on the bottom as well because this line is really on the angle. So maybe we'll do something more like this. And 
And then of course I'm going to repeat these adjustments on the back pattern piece as well. After the markings of the new side seams are done, let's cut away the extra. But as always, I'm not cutting right on the line, but about 3 8 of an inch away, which is the width of my seam allowance. Now I can pin the side seam once again and do the final tryout of the armhole. And if everything looks good, then now we have to copy everything that we've done on one side onto the other side. After all side seams have been adjusted, we can start by actually putting them together. Place right sides together, the front and the back, and then sew it with a straight stitch. After that, I'm going to finish the raw edges of the fabric on my serger. Next step would be to give it a really good press, with the seam allowances looking towards the back. Before I can move on to the sleeve, I need to attach the other blue trim, and I simply do it by hand sewing needle and thread. Now, as a reminder, of course, you don't have to add any trims, but sometimes it can add a little special touch to your upcycle. My little trim is attached, so let's talk about the sleeve. The sleeve here is larger than the armhole, which is exactly what I want. And currently it is in exactly the same state as it was when I cut it off, so I haven't adjusted anything just yet. The back and the front armhole here are roughly the same length, so I'm going to find the center of my sleeve, I'm going to mark it, and we're going to align it with the shoulder seam right over here. Right now I'm going to base this on the longest straight stitch that I have on my sewing machine. First I'm going to align the seam of the sleeve with the side seam of my blouse and then pin it. I'm going to do the same for the shoulder seam and the marking that we made on the sleeve. Next I'm going to start gathering the sleeve to fit in the armhole. This is what it looks right now basted in. And you can see that the hem of the sleeve doesn't hang parallel to the floor. In order to fix that we gotta pull up the bottom of the sleeve a little bit in the underarm section. In order to make this adjustment on the sleeve itself, I'm going to take a couple of inches down the seam of the sleeve and then freehand a new curve. For the next few techniques we will go rather quickly because I have detailed tutorials for all of them. First finish the hem of the sleeve and then fold it under creating a casing for the elastic. Then sew in the sleeve with a straight stitch first and then finish the raw edges just like we did throughout this entire project. If you would like you can fold the seam allowances towards the shoulder and then top stitch them. Now I decided to finish the neckline by adding a ruffle and there is a full step-by-step -step members extra video for this particular technique. Finally, let's top stitch the button placket. Fold all seam allowances inside, pin from the right side of the garment and then top stitch. For the hem, I usually choose narrow double fold technique which is absolutely great for projects like these. And after completing the final stitches on the hem, here it is, the final result. Now I must say that the final garment did turn out just a tad bit too girly. I wasn't really planning for that. I wanted to add some femininity, some feminine touch to it, but I think um, there's quite a bit of it right now, but I do love the final result. And I know that sometimes you might watch these upcycles and think to yourself that it's a little bit too complex, or perhaps there's no way that you can do it, but I would encourage you to take a moment and to really believe in yourself, because if I can do it, you can totally do it and I also I want to share with you that when I learn something let's say painting or you know whatever else anything that you do with your hands 
Sometimes I read and watch and then do it time and time and time again until I finally get the result that I want. So it doesn't happen from the first try, which is totally normal. I think sometimes we assume that after watching it once, bam, it's gonna all come together. But sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So I definitely want to encourage you. I would love to share with you that you can wear the sleeve two ways. You can wear it like that, or you can tuck the hem underneath and then it sort of gives it a bubble effect, which I think I prefer better than the sleeve but I like both of them both are really wearable here's a quick glance on the insides of the upcycle I truly believe that if you want your upcycles to last you gotta do them well so that way they serve you and all your hard work just doesn't go away after the first wash and if you'd like to see more upcycles then definitely click right over here plenty of ideas for anything that you would like to do in the future until next time happy thoughtful sewing and upcycling I'll see you very soon Bye!